Hello and welcome back to our channel. In today's story, we will delve into two tales of relationships tested by life's challenges, examining their resilience in the face of adversity. To prepare to be captivated by the first story, which revolves around a couple grappling with a crisis triggered by the husband's discovery of his wife's infidelity, and now she might be bearing the child of another man. I accused my wife of cheating because she was pregnant with her cousin, but the truth was, long story short, my 35 male, wife Amy 34 female cheated on me. I don't know why. She says she doesn't know why either. Anytime I ask anything, it's just a river of tears. She says sorry and begs me to forgive her and forget it, but I can't. But leaving hasn't been easy either. We have two boys together. She's my high school sweetheart. Our families are longtime friends and are still tight with each other. They've all urged me to stay for the kids, to forgive her since it was one time. To not give up all the good because of one bad. But the worst part is she's pregnant. I found out about the pregnancy from my mother as I had her blocked and wasn't living in the same house anymore. I demanded a paternity test. She readily agreed and swore she'd get rid of the child if it's not mine. She's had nothing but curse words for her affair partner. But then all she's done since getting caught didn't confess is curse the guy and herself and cry. She's threatened to end herself. All she does is hug the boys and cry. I'm waiting on the results. I'll divorce her anyway, but she says the baby is for sure mine. That she slept with him once, whereas we'd been intimate pretty much every night the duration of her affair. It lasted two months, I think. They met, talked, and slept only once if I'm to believe her. I don't know why, but the idea of the child being mine disgusts me. It feels like she couldn't commit to anything. Not to me nor the other guy. Why was she cheating if I was satisfying her? How is it that she wanted to talk about her feelings with some random man but not me? How was she sharing her deepest thoughts and feelings with this guy and being with me at once? How does that even work? I've always thought cheating was because you weren't being fulfilled by your partner at home. I've read all these stories of wives leaving their kids, denying affections to their husbands, making jokes at the husband's expense, ruining the men financially, etc. She's done nothing of that sort. She's still the best mother I could have hoped for my sons. They love her more than they love me, I know. She was still the same loving and giving woman I fell for while she was with the other guy. I saw her text the one she hadn't deleted, and every other text is I love my husband. I don't understand. I can't make heads or tails of this situation. If I did give her a baby, am I expected to forget and move back in? What if I can't do that? It's easy to hate the child now because that might be her adoptive parents. But what if it's mine and I still hate it? I genuinely don't know how to be without her. Our entire lives are interwoven. Some days I want to go back to the blissful ignorance I was living in. The DNA report takes a week, I believe. It's been three days. My sister, she visits Amy regularly. I'm angry about that too because she's only visited me twice. Says my wife just looks at our wedding photos and cries. We have a whole junkyard collection worth of pictures and memories. She begged me to go see her once. I am clueless of how to proceed. It would have been so much easier if she had been a horrible woman for those two months that I could begin to look back and hate. But I can't. Life had been as normal and sweet as ever. I don't even have a bad memory of her I can use to hate her. Our last big fight before this I can't even remember. I'm going to see her and my boys tomorrow. I think I'll ask for DNA tests on them too. I know they're mine. But you never know. Maybe I'll do it just to hurt her. Maybe I'll find something and I'll just hurt myself more. But that feels so unfair to the boys. Just how do I make sense of this? OP soon updated his post one day later when he contacted Amy to meet up. I called her. She was crying again, but agreed to meet with me. I told her I was going to divorce one way or another. But whether we can ever reconcile a few years later or not fully depends on her honesty. She was crying and her voice sounded rough. But after a while, she said she will tell me everything. So she does know why she did it. But for some reason, she asked me to bring my sister along. My sister hasn't said anything either. I'm only praying my sister doesn't turn out to be an accomplice or something. She didn't beg for forgiveness or say think about our kids after I told her how manipulative she's sounding. She seemed genuinely shocked to realize how she was holding me hostage with her threats. Does that mean something deeper? Are they the actions of someone who has remorse? He added another line describing what happened when he talked to his wife. I talked to her. She showed me all the evidence and I found out which the man was. I am certain now that she was in fact assaulted. However, Amy doesn't seem to think so. She says she didn't fight back and had goaded him, which made him attack her. I cannot update because Reddit is being strange. I have decided to put everything on hold for now. And just take her counseling. Nothing else until I get the paternity results on the baby. Thank you so much for all the advice. 
Now, let's see if our Redditors had anything to say about this case. Don't ever stay for the kids. It's such an abused concept in my culture. And every person I grew up with that had both their parents grew up fricked up and are still working through those issues, including myself. You will find yourself taking out frustration on the wrong people, most likely the kids. Find a way to divorce her and do right by your boys. They deserve all the love and whatever that takes, take those actions. This commenter soon edited their comment as soon as OP made an update on his post. OP updates were posted after my reply his wife was sexually assaulted and that changes everything he was not cheated on. I hope no one equates rape sexual assault to something even close to cheating either and I hope she gets the support she needs. And here's another Redditor who gave OP their advice. To be honest, my advice is divorce. How can you mend relationships that are completely broken? Of course, your wife cries and scolds her lover after all. She was caught cheating and she didn't admit it herself. So she didn't regret cheating, she only regrets because she was caught, otherwise she would have continued to cheat on you. Be sure to ask for a DNA test for your children, because if she has been unfaithful to you now, she may have been unfaithful in the past too. Staying in a marriage just for the sake of children, when the very essence of marriage is broken and there is no more trust, is not a solution. Because children see and understand everything and will learn in the future to live with the same vision that it is normal when wives cheat. And husbands need to reconcile for the sake of the children and move on with their lives. And this is fundamentally wrong. Even after the divorce, you will still be their father and can take care of them, but in a healthy relationship. OP replied, I cannot even tell if we're completely broken. Some days I just need her next to me, and other days I wish she was just gone. I love her, I really do. It's killing me because I write one bad thing about her and I immediately feel sick. This wasn't supposed to happen. The affair was over by the time I found out. She had blocked him and he had texted her from a different number. I looked through her blocked list and the guy, I don't know who had been texting her from several different numbers and she had blocked them all. The oldest blocked number is where I found the texts. She has never cheated before. That much I know. The kids are mine and I know that too. It feels like it would be easier if she had some past history or was cold or something. I don't know, but it seems like the guy came out of nowhere, ruined my life and left. My boys don't know, thankfully. Amy has been taking care of them, and whenever I talk to them, they ask me to come home. But they don't seem sad or scared. They have their mom with them, so they're happy. I don't know how I'll ever convince them to stay with me. At the same time, this Reddit user advised OP should take action immediately. Contact a divorce lawyer and reach out to schedule an appointment with a licensed marriage and family therapist immediately. Do get paternity tests on your other children as well. You are not going to find out why she cheated on you, certainly not right now. All you can do is what you can control, which is take the steps towards separating your lives and arranging things for your children. You can be fair, but you must be firm. Do not let tears dissuade you from proceeding. You cannot live with her any longer. There is no way you will forget how she betrayed you. Do not delay. Take action tomorrow morning. OP replied. I met with the lawyer. I don't remember what I told him, but he said I sound like I don't want to leave her at all. He suggested therapy and I have begun looking for one. I know the kids are mine. They look so much like me. Amy always said she loved how our boys were my mini me. I love that too. I miss my boys. But I also know they'd never choose me over her. I can't even hate that because I love that she's been such an amazing mother. I couldn't fully move away from her ever. I don't even remember life without her. I'd gladly give away everything just to go back in time and stop her from making such a choice. What could be more devastating than discovering your wife's infidelity? OP must have felt utter despair and anguish upon learning the truth. Yet his love for Amy gave him the strength to persevere and stay with her. Despite lingering doubts and suspicions, OP made the right choice by confronting his wife, only to discover that she was not unfaithful but rather a victim of sexual assault. We hope that OP can now let go of his defenses and treat his wife and children with the love and respect they deserve. However, this situation raises an important question. As mentioned in the comments section, should OP remain in the relationship for the sake of the children? We wholeheartedly agree that staying in a household with emotionally distressed or dysfunctional parents can only cause further harm to the children's well-being. What are your thoughts about this case? Please share your ideas in the comments sections below. Keeping his promise, OP delivered the DNA results within the week. With the results in hand, he promptly shared an update on the current state of affairs between him and Amy. So the DNA reports came back, and the baby is mine. I wasn't even surprised at this point. The day we sat down and talked, she told me she had returned home to immediately take her birth control pill, so she was certain the baby would be mine, and she once again said if by any chance it was the other guy, she would abort the baby. 
that she had no plans or desire to have kids with anyone except me. I won't lie. Her words were a good comfort to me. I could tell she was telling the truth. I've been reading too many Reddit stories of men finding out their wives were all too willing to have some random man's child. I cannot lie. Even the idea of that made me sick. I asked her if she'd keep this baby, even if I filed for divorce. She said yes. So that's where we're at in terms of the baby. As for the other guy, not disclosing too many details, it was a relative of hers. An older cousin who had been harassing her for a long time, literally since before we even met. She just never said anything to me or complained because her family and frankly mine too are obsessed with the entire family comes before all mindset. I'm seeing this pressure to keep everything together happen to me in real time after all. Anyway, long story short, he had returned to our hometown around three months ago and started texting, following, and harassing her. Hence why all the block numbers and repeated texts of being happy with me and loving only me. She admitted to sending him a videotape of us being intimate as a way to make him ashamed of her and leave her alone. That she had repeatedly spoken about me and mocked him when he insisted he could do better. She thinks all this goading and insulting had triggered him to attack her and she never said anything to me because she is certain it was her fault for engaging with him. That if she had ignored him like before, he'd have just left her alone. I've seen enough texts, confronted enough people, and heard enough to confirm she isn't lying. Now I'm just focused on getting this woman the therapy it turns out she has needed for a long time. I have decided on legal separation for now, but haven't met with the lawyer yet. Our kids will have both of us, of course, and I'm happy to know at least my irrational hate for the baby is gone. It's the only positive thing I'm feeling right now. I'm beginning to think clearer now. Reddit has helped me feel confident in protecting myself. I don't feel quite so selfish now. I will support Amy because she desperately needs it. Our relationship needs work, but that comes second to her health, our baby and our sons. I'm going to work on us, but I'm also taking steps to protect myself and the boys. I have Reddit to thank for giving me the confidence to do this and not feel guilty. Much thanks for that. OP then added this note on his post. I am not divorcing her. It's a temporary separation separation because she needs to heal first before we can be a couple again. Her response to being harassed by that man was putting herself on me. She admitted our first time over 10 years ago was in part influenced by his obsession with her virginity, meaning our first time happened before she was actually ready for something like that. Her response to his text was sending intimate videos of us. Her response to me trying to get some space was trying to seduce me back into bed with her. I'm not a therapist, but that attitude is not healthy. That much even I can tell. Right now, her idea of therapy is to pretend like nothing happened and try to get intimate with me at any opportunity. And she takes me saying no as rejecting her for being used. I'm not helping her with this separation, I know, but I can tell I'm not helping her cope by being too close either. A little separation is best as suggested by the therapist and lawyer. Yes, I know she didn't cheat. It's that the title has to be the same for an update. I'm not calling her assault cheating. In response to the situation, there's a lot of things people wanted to know about, so we have gathered some noticeable comments to share with you. You're not obligated to answer these questions, I'm just trying to gain a better understanding. Cousin sexually assaulted her. This has been confirmed by sources within the family. Has the cousin attempted grooming her in years past? The tape of the two of you was sent to the cousin under duress, willingly, and to what end? I'm confused about this piece especially. I'm not implying your wife is lying. There's just a lot said that is missing context. Either way, your wife needs therapy. You're right to support that. Her health, your sons, and this baby. Therapy might be a good choice for you too. Sometimes just having an outside and objective person to ID it with is tremendously beneficial. This is a complex situation. I hope wisdom, peace, and resolution rise to meet you with every step of this journey. OP said, her mother confirmed it after I threatened to call the cops on her. She said Amy told her but she thought it was a lie because it was too disgusting to be true her words. Amy said he had always made comments to her. But her aunt and mother assured her it was nothing serious. Amy sent that tape after he kept telling her she could do better than me and was mocking me. She thought it would shut him up and maybe disgust him into leaving her alone. I'm not all sure of what she was thinking myself. We all need therapy. That is for certain, and we've got all appointments lined up. I think separate therapy is needed first, and then couples. A user on Reddit voiced their thoughts. In another comment, you said you are legally separating because she wasn't forthcoming about the sexual harassment. However, look at how her family has failed her. How long has this been happening? Since she was a teenager? Although she's an adult now, her family's dismissal of sexual harassment has seriously screwed up her ability to judge the situation. 
I get that you both need therapy and you need time to process this info, but hold off on a legal separation until you've had a few sessions with a therapist. Ask them to help you make sense of why she didn't tell you. Please don't do this to her. She was already conditioned by her family to keep quiet about sexual abuse, and now your actions are enforcing that belief. And if nobody is calling the cops on her cousin, they might as well just be enablers because this will happen again. Except this time, she knows for a fact that she won't get any support and will keep quiet about it. I'm not separating because she lied. OP explained that. I'm physically keeping distance because Amy thinks everything will be okay if we have sex. I truly think she needs therapy before we can get there. But anytime I try to say no, she thinks I hate her and gets worked up and stressed. The therapist suggested separation until the first few sessions are done. It's called legal separation because the spouses have two different living addresses. I'm not divorcing her. I have no plans to. I just want her to heal properly first because continuing with the marriage. I found all this out four days ago. I'm trying to fix everything one step at a time. That's all, believe me, I have no plans of abandoning her. And this user was concerned about the safety of Amy. You're upset because this man knows where you live and could have hurt the kids. He did hurt and assault your wife. And your response is to separate and leave her alone in the household where he knows she lives and could possibly assault her again in your absence. Like, are we really looking at this realistically? OP answered. She's not alone. My sister stays with her at nights, and I spent the day there. I just stay away during the nights. I asked her parents. The man skipped town two months ago, right after everything happened. I found out everything four days ago. The child is indeed OP. What a relief. Thankfully, no child was affected by this update. It's shocking to discover that Amy's attacker was someone close to her. Despite her attempts to resist, Amy was unable to prevent the man from manipulating her, possibly due to a desire to shield her husband from direct involvement. In an effort to prove her loyalty, Amy secretly filmed herself and OP engaging in intimacy and sending the video to the attacker. However, she had no idea that this action would only fuel his desires, leading to the incident described in the initial post. With the truth now revealed, OP should focus on the immediate needs of his wife and child, who both require his unwavering support. Additionally, the support of their families will help alleviate the burden on both OP and Amy, allowing them to focus on healing and mending their relationship before they are ready to live normally from now on. We extend our heartfelt wishes for a brighter future for OP and his family. In the next story, we embark on a journey to witness how a husband gradually erodes his wife's sense of security, culminating in a shocking climax. She really needs help, so how about joining us as we delve into the narrative from the wife's perspective and finding a way to help her overcome this depressing situation. My husband's closeness with our neighbor bothered me. I want us to move out of here. I know hormones probably play a role here, but I'm not sure if I'm overreacting. My husband and I moved here back in June of 2023, and he soon became super close with the couple next door. To a point where every single day we were being invited out on the boat or over to have BBQ with them. It bothered me a great deal, honestly, because every time I said I didn't want to go, my husband would pretty much force his hand and guilt me into going and I was pregnant and simply didn't want to be around anyone. He would say, well, I want to go, but if you don't go with me, then it'll make me look like a bad husband. The wife next door was also pregnant. But there's been a buildup of stuff that bothers me a lot, and yes, I have communicated it. Like, last year when we were on the boat, we stopped off at one of the lake stores, and my husband and the other husband went in. They asked me and the wife if we wanted anything. She had asked for like four or five different things. I asked for one very specific soda because I was craving it. When they came back out, I found that my husband had bought the other wife everything she requested. Why didn't her husband buy it and he didn't get me anything because he forgot? And didn't go back in or anything because it was too busy and didn't want to stand in line for 20 minutes. Or if we are standing by the fire pit, he will ask the other wife if she needs a seat before he asks me. Or if he sees her grilling food, he will be like, here, let me do that for you. But if he sees me cooking, he never offers to take over. He also takes all the garbage to the dump for her, despite her having a husband who can do it. We'll take out their dog, keep an eye on her kids so she can go to the store, but I have only taken literally 10 showers without the baby since I gave birth six months ago. I don't think anything is truly going on, but I know for an absolute fact that he's trying to look like a superhero, super dad, super husband to her when he's actually not. He loves the attention he gets from doing all these favors for her, but he just doesn't do that stuff at home. He used to. Before we moved here, he used to be a great husband. Like I said, I have communicated with him that this bothers me a great deal. But he's not cheating and he doesn't think he's doing anything wrong because he's just helping people out. But it's been dragging me. Every single time I see him do anything for her, I start resenting him more. Because it's every single day. 
where every single time I watch him walk over to their house and talk to them while I'm inside cooking, parenting destroys me. Because again, it's every single day. I told him last night that if we don't move out of here, I will end up divorcing him. That I feel like the side witch to his real wife talking about the woman next door. He still thinks I'm being ridiculous because there is no cheating going on. I know there's not, but that makes no difference to me. He's still panning for her approval and doing things for her. And while he did do that for me for years, he hasn't done that since we moved here. He says we can't afford to move and that he's just happy to have friends again after going years with essentially no social life. I just can't do it anymore. OP responded due to many questionnaires about her anonymous post she'd made. The post about the boat and my husband catering to the friend's pregnant wife from last year was me. I posted it on a throwaway account that I no longer have access to. On to the comment section, besides judging the situation, many advice and questions were made for us to follow the story easier. Stop going over there. If it makes him look like a bad husband, then tell him well if the shoe fits because it's not wrong. Marriage counseling is recommended here. He's clearly into this woman and he's willing to put his marriage at stake because he is a bad husband, not the a whole. OP replied, I haven't gone there for about two weeks. He still goes. Another commented, he's clearly infatuated with the woman next door and impressing her matters more to him than being a decent spouse to you. He sucks and you deserve better. I'm not sure what the solution is since he refuses to admit that he's doing anything wrong. Do you have any family or friends you can stay with for a bit? Maybe if you tell him you're leaving because you're done being an afterthought, it will snap him out of his fixation on the neighbor. If it doesn't, you may need to pull the pin on this dead-end marriage. It's not the a-hole. OP wrote, she's a very beautiful woman. And she's super funny and so laid back and fun. Throw in the mix that she's a school teacher and I can see why his fantasies are running wild. I get why he would be infatuated. It just hurts. It really, really hurts. Under this comment, this person has brought up a good point. What's her husband doing while yours is making a fool of himself over his wife? If I were that guy, your husband would be the victim of a boating accident for being so inappropriate with another man's wife. OP gave him an answer. He pretty much does nothing. That's why my husband says that he helps out the guy's wife. Because he's kind of a sexist man who thinks the woman should be doing all the womanly duties type of guy. She has a baby also, so my husband steps in. A Redditor voiced their thoughts. How long has this been happening? Because he sounds like a real a hole. He needs to shape up or get kicked out. There is no way this woman doesn't notice this. She either feels sorry for you and doesn't know how to shut it down without it being unbearably awkward, or she welcomes it. Maybe you should become friends with an attractive man and very clearly worship him and do everything for him. Then tell your husband he has no right to complain because you're not actually fricking this guy. OP said... She definitely welcomes it, but she acts the same way with everyone, so I don't think it's intentional. It's been a lot more frequent in the past month or so, but it started happening when we first moved in last year. After hearing those words from OP, we strongly encourage OP to initiate a frank and open dialogue with her husband. His frequent visits to his neighbor are causing her distress, not necessarily due to the visits themselves, but rather the excessive frequency. Moreover, his actions demonstrate a disregard for OP feelings and suggest that his hero persona he is proud of is merely a facade he presents to the others. Both OP and her husband need to adopt a more assertive approach in addressing this issue, which may require significant effort given the husband's apparent deep involvement in his new relationship. How about you? What action would you take if you were in OP shoes? Did the husband's actions cross the line of acceptability? Let's join in the conversation and share your insights in the comments below. The story ends here leaving us with a trail of unanswered questions and a hunger for more. Rest assured we will promptly deliver the latest updates as soon as OP share them, so stay tuned for more. Before you go, please support us by giving us a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel, and enabling notifications to receive our daily content. Until next time, we'll meet again in another video of Tell Talks. Goodbye and have a nice day.